Hey, True Believers, Chris Mack coming at you with Deadpool, the Circle Chase issue four. This is the final issue of this mini series, and I've enjoyed what I've seen thus far. This is how I remember Deadpool being compared to modern Marvel, where he's like chimichangas and MySpace and unicorns and puppies and MySpace and Facebook. And no, no. Uh, the print date on this was November 1993, and I like the way this starts out because, again, Weasel is a complete 180 of uh, the nerd that they used for the movie. I can't remember his name, but definitely was not the person that should have portrayed Weasel. So we are now outside of Kathmandu, the capital of Nepal. And I guess it's the Palace of Tomorrow's Hope, a temple devoted to prayer and peace. The expectation for the solemn monks inside that is that one day their prayers will be answered. And there will be peace and and love and harmony on earth. I hate everything! <laughs> because here Weasel is kind of the, what do you call it? Sort of supposed to be like the, the tech guy, the quote unquote man in the chair, except he bitches. And that part for the movie they got right, but uh, yeah, he actually, even though he hates doing this stuff, he can't do it. He's like, I hate physical effort. I hate doing this by myself. And most of all, I hate Wade for doing this to me by going off half cocked on his own. And so, you know, you kind of see how much of a, of a twit he really is. But I like how, even though he says, um, I've never seen uh, Deadpool afraid of anything. Except when he talks about his old days with the Weapon X program. And when he first thought his uh, old boss, Tolliver, had had his old babe, Vanessa, killed a year ago. But you'd think at the very least he could respect that his old buddy might just be a teeniest bit afraid of breaking into a temple which is holding the greatest weapon on the face of and then we turn the page once the page will come into my thumb and we see that Deadpool has uh, gone through a bunch of mon monks and it's just kind of like okay <laughs> and, and you know, Weasel doesn't exactly know what to make of this, but I like how he says, um, there's nothing I like better than stomping on a whole bunch of monks. I can't stand monks. Kind of unnatural to me, you know? Besides living with a bunch of bald guys all the time, you end up praying all for time for priests and junk. Fooey, I say. Go to a ball game. Go to a concert. Watch some reruns of Nick. Maybe the monkeys? Get it, Weasel. And what's the deal with Peter Tork, anyway? I mean, what's that all about? Now, I'll be honest, um, I don't remember who Peter Tork is, so feel free to fill me in on that. But as you can see, the pop culture references aren't rapid fire, and uh, the stupidity isn't ranked, cracked up to 11. So, before we go any further, this is called Duck Soup, brought to you by Las Hermanos Hispanicos, Fabian Nikizia, writer, Joe Maderia, penciler, Harry, uh, Harry Candelaria, inkers, with honorary Spaniards, Cristobel Ianopoulos, letters, Galinta Oliver, Colors, Susanna Gaffney, Editor, Roberto Harris, Group Editor, and Tomasino De Falco, El Editor Mascarande. <laughs> Just, that made me laugh. Again, I miss how the creative team would, would bring you and make you feel like you were part of, you know, you are in on the joke. It made you feel like you were part of the creative process and reading stuff like that. It just makes you laugh. So with that said, moving on, moving on. So the, the whole book, you know, there's been different um, elements that we've been reading, you know, focusing obviously on uh, Deadpool, but then we have Garrison Kane, we have Slayback, we have Vanessa Carlisle, and so everybody kind of starts to uh, converge on this tower. And of course things kind of start to become a, a boiling point. I like how once they find uh, Tolliver's will, because the whole point of this is Tolliver dies, he leaves a will saying that uh, the assassin to get it first or whatever will inherit it. And they come in here and they're thinking that they're going to get all these goodies. And for me in this book, um, this kind of reminds me of the Maltese Falcon where all Tolliver's will is sort of the... Uh, oh shit, what's that word? MacGuffin. Because, yeah, it, it's sort of... Well, yeah, I can't really say it's a 100% MacGuffin because MacGuffins 90% of the time don't have a payoff. This one kind of does, but it doesn't in a sense, because you focus more on what the more the main focus for me of this book is the character growth. 
So anyway, with that said, you know, um, so Weasel's doing the scans, and he goes, for all we know, one of these could be primed to blow up in our faces. Last thing I want is having you uh, screw up my 70% of the take. And Wade's like, him, Wade, uh, what's his name? Weasel's like, what? He goes, packing chips. It's the greatest weapon on the face of the planet, styrofoam packing chips. Which, whenever uh, you know, I order a figure online, God, do I hate getting packing peanuts. They are a mother. You know, they stick to everything. The child gets them, runs off with them. The dogs get them. They hide under everything. And, oh, PTSD right there, man. PTSD. So as you notice, going back here, they start moving this mannequin around. And you begin to notice that it very much looks like um, Zero, which is part of... Um, What's Cable's nemesis, the uh, Mutant Liberation Front? So you're thinking, oh shit, what's this thing going to do? But before I, anything else like that could happen, as I just said, things start to become to a boiling point. You know, Kane and uh, Deadpool face off again. And because of their hatred for each other, even though they ended, had time in the Weapon X program, they, go, they uh, start to go at one another pretty fierce. But before they can even finish their fight and walk slayback with Vanessa. Now remember, Vanessa, no matter, uh, she's kind of like Rogue in a sense, where when she touches someone, she, or not, well, it's kind of a mixture of Rogue and Mystique. Because she has to touch someone to absorb their their look, which is what's happening here. She's starting to look more mechanical, like slayback. And what I mean by that is with Rogue, when she absorbs, when she touches someone, she absorbs their powers. But that's it, not their physical appearances most of the time. Um, Mystique doesn't have to touch, she can just look at you. So it's kind of an interesting um, hodgepodge of those two powers here. And uh, what I like is how Wade's like, I thought I killed you. Having blue blazes, can you be alive? I blew you up. And what I like is how even though Deadpool through this whole series, and even through the early pages of X-Force has always seemed so cocksure of himself, you start to notice the uh, facial expressions start to change. He's like, I know you died. I saw eyes floating in the water. Brain juice and bone and muscle, intestines, everything. And I like how Weasel's, you know, hiding out because, you know, he's seen superheroes fight. Screw this. But he goes, Wade, slow it down. He's panicking. He never panics. So that was, that was just a nice moment of character development. Now as things go on, um, something happens with Vanessa, which gives for a very sweet moment. And again, how I was talking about um, the Zero unit, sort of being a MacGuffin, but not really being a MacGuffin, we kind of get a payoff here. And then, get past some of this, because again, I don't want to spoil a lot of it. Boop, 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 boop. I want to get to here where he finally has a moment with Vanessa. And she goes, thank you for saving me. And he goes, I did it because I've always, I mean, I, I know, Wade, but I don't love you anymore. And you've, and you have to also get beyond the cancer, beyond Tolliver, beyond Slayback. I love someone else now. I still care about you, but I've gone beyond what we had. You have to get beyond everything that drags you down. But most of all, you have to get beyond yourself. So that was a very tender moment. It kind of hits in the fills, especially when you read this in its entirety and you kind of see their history together. Nikizia did a really good job of building that up to this moment. And I feel like this was more of a payoff than what Tulliver's uh, quote-unquote uh, ultimate weapon in his will was. But what I like is even though as you get towards the end of the book, Wade's like, who knows? Maybe there's some hope for me yet. I feel better already. <laughs> so even though you get this moment and you're just, you know, you're hitting the fills, it still kind of ends with a little bit of comic relief, but Here's the difference. In the terms of the comic relief, 
it help, had, helps add to the book instead of like, oh, I'm going to go ride on a jet ski with a talking shark and, and drink some Kahluas with a chimney changa and blah, 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 with the balloons and the pink and the... All that stupid, random, shallow bullshit that the modern Deadpool has. This is good storytelling right here, guys. Excellent run. If you can find all four of these issues individually, I highly recommend picking them up in this format. If not, then there's always the route of collected trade. Me, I'm just, I'm a sucker for the floppies. I mean, I'll read a collected trade if I'm traveling somewhere or if I can't find the originals, like they're too expensive or just damn near impossible. But still, I'm, I'm a sucker for the floppies. Always have, always will be. So with that said, if you guys have enjoyed what you've seen in this book, please first and foremost support your local comic shop and pick up a copy. If you've enjoyed this review, we really would appreciate if you take a moment to hit like, share, and subscribe. Helps the club channel more than you could possibly know. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that fancy little slayback bell next to subscribe, that way as we can continue to upload content, you guys get notified. Come to the channel. Love talking with you all and hearing your thoughts and feedback down in the comments below or our social media pages, which I'll make sure to leave the links down in the description. So with all that said, thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you all continue to have an absolutely amazing day reading and happy hunting, true believers.